أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علي كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به وعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين صدق الله العلي صلى على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صلى على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليكم my dear brothers and sisters أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بعدد ما أحاط به علمك وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد صلوات الله وسلامه عليه 
وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين طاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين سيما بقية الله في العالمين روحي وأرواح العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي We're getting closer to the uh, Arba'een of uh, Abu Abdullah and his companions and this is actually the uh, last weekend uh, to uh, Arba'een and inshallah we will be uh, commemorating uh, the remembrance of Abu Abdullah and his household on the day of Arba'in and recite this uh, very uh, beautiful and profound ziyara, Ziyaratul Arba'in, which was narrated from Imam al Sadiq alayhi salatu salam to one of his uh, sincere and devoted uh, companions. We are at the end of uh, this uh, very uh, profound ziyarat and we actually went uh, through different part of this ziyarat and it actually uh, gave us a lot of insight uh, about the position of Abu Abdullah and the purpose of Abu Abdullah al Hussein uh, alayhi salam why he when Karbala, what was his purpose and his, his philosophy, and also some uh, of uh, very important insight about the uh, the way we need to uh, we need to set our our emotions uh, toward the friends and those people that they are with Abu Abdullah and those people that they're against of Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam. At the end of the ziyara. Uh, Imam al-Sadiq, uh, mostly he talks about the position of Imams and Ahlul Bayt specifically about Imam al Hussein, but in general uh, about uh, all our beloved Imams and Ma'asumin One of the things that we see in different ziyarat, uh, we bear witness uh, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the 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 ma'asumin and the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam they are pure from any evilness they are pure from any impurity and even in terms of uh, physical impurity they are pure right and that's something uh, that it's only about ma'asumin alayhi wa salatu wasalam the family of Rasulullah and the best uh, reference and reason uh, is from Quran. Quran clearly in Surah Al Ahzab, well known ayah, إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس أهل البيت ويطهركم تطهيرا. It's interesting that the way Allah Subhanahu wa Taala starts uh, this part of ayah. He says, indeed, it's the wish and the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's something that Allah decided to be. And that is the purity of the family of Rasulullah. It's not something that it's up to people to choose. No, it's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose. Innama yuridullah. Yurid meaning... He wanted, right? He wanted to purify the family of Rasulullah from any rich, rich, any, uh, any impurity and any ugliness, right? Anything that it, it seems and it looks and it feels bad, that called rich, right? He purified the family of Rasulullah from any evilness, from any impurity. Two times he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word of tahara or tathir, meaning purity. You are pure, right? Uh, it's emphasizing again on the uh, 
word of purity. So that's why we see it through uh, ziyarat and du'as that uh, Ma'asumin refers to the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as as people that they are uh, they are pure from any any riches, any evilness, any impurity. Wal arhamil mutahara the Imam al Hussein, the uh, Ahlul Bayt alayhim as as they are from purified wombs, right? They have no uh, impurity even they, the way they are born. This is very important about the family of Ahlul, uh, the family of Rasulullah and the impurity of the ignorance era could not object you to filth, right? It means that the family of Rasulullah, they never worshipped idols. Look at the life of Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam. When he was born, he was uh, very, uh, very young, a young boy, right? And Rasulullah took him and he actually raised him. The Prophet ﷺ. So when he wasn't even a Baligh, Rasulullah became Muslim and he was the first one who became Muslim, Imam Ali والسلام, So he never experienced a time that he was worshipping idols. So that's why here Imam Al Sadiq والسلام, he emphasized on this very important fact that the family of Rasulullah never uh, never been objected to uh, to to follow the culture the tradition the religion whatever you want to call of ignorance before Islam so they are pure from that sense right they are pure from the sense of uh, in terms of uh, you know their phys physique and the way they are born and they are they are pure in terms of uh, their soul right even before prophet of islam became prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as prophet himself you cannot find any incident that the prophet even before his prophethood that worship idols there's no such a such an evidence there's no such a such an incident prophet was always rejecting the way uh, the people before islam used to worship their idols used to live their life used to conduct their akhlaq so their prophet وسلم, from the beginning even he, before he, his prophethood he was pure from any uh, anything that uh, it's from the culture of ignorance. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّكَ مِنْ دَعَائِمِ الدِّينِ وَأَرْكَانِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَمَعْقَلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Here, from here, Imam al-Sadiq is talking about the, the position of Imam. I also bear witness that you are one of the, the, the backbone of religion. You are one of those people that religion and the life of religion and the authenticity of religion depends on you right and wa arkanil muslimin you're the support of muslims you're the haven of believers meaning believers comes to you and they depend on you right they lean on you they they come and seek support from you it's interesting it's in in a way imam al-sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam is referring to the fact that first you are the uh, the da'aim al-deen you're from those people that they help religion and you're the backbone of religion right 
and the second part he's referring to Muslims your position uh, to Muslims those people that they are not believers right because there is a difference between Islam submission and Iman and faith Surah Al-Hujurat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala differentiate between is Islam and Iman and what is the difference the difference is that Islam is something that you accept right you bear witness that there is no God but Allah you bear witness that there is Muhammad وسلم, and he's the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is Islam Iman is something that should enter to hearts right in Surah Al-Hujurat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to those uh, uh, people that they are they used to live in desert like Bedouins and their their faith was sometimes for some of them because of their tribes Islam right so the leader of the tribe would believe would submit and all the tribes would submit and some of them would that the reason of their Islam and their submission was because of the leader of the tribe right so and they used to call themselves that we are believers so those ayats referring to believers they would take it as something that it's about them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referring them and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet and says that oh Prophet tell them that you're not believer you did not believe you should say aslamna you should say that I submit to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet being the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I submit about these facts so if you want to say that I'm a believer you have to make sure that Be believes and faith enters your heart from your heart you really believe right Iman is something that should enter and be in your heart not something with your tongue and actually if I want to explain a little bit more about why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah maybe it's interesting some of Muslims because the fact that they became Muslim and they submit they used to go to Prophet and ask for help for example oh Prophet give me money or Prophet give me uh, you know give me food and sometimes they had this expectation from from the Prophet that because we submit because we're Muslim we became Muslim now we owe something right now you need to fulfill your responsibility and give us some services for example you have to now give us certain thing whenever we want to ask you need to you need to give us you need to listen to us because the fact that we now are muslim so now you need to listen to us and interestingly uh, following ayah at the end of Surah Al-Hujurat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells those people that don't think that because you're Muslim you, the Prophet needs to do something for you you're doing something pr for Prophet no it's the, actually the opposite the Prophet is doing something for you now the Prophet introducing the Iman, the Islam for you. So you need to actually give service and show your devotion to the Prophet, not the other way around. Which actually, uh, sometimes we need to, you know, think about that fact, uh, that sometimes we think because we're Shia or because we're praying Salat or doing fast, Uh, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs to do something for us obviously he always does but the the sense and the, the 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 way of this 
thinking is that because I believe God or the messenger needs to do something for me or to believers, but it's actually the other way around. And the believers, the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala need to always be grateful because of the religion, because of the fact that we know that there are imams that we can seek support from them. We, we have imams that we, we can depend and lean on them, right? And then he continues, وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّكَ الْإِمَامُ الْبَرُّ التَّقِي I also bear witness that you are the God-fearing pious. الرَّضِيُّ الزَّكِي You're the one who is pleased from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. رِضَى مَقَامُ الرِّضَى The stage and the position of being satisfied from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very... Uh, very beautiful and also uh, touching uh, position to be in. Those people that they are in the position of rida, satisfaction from their Lord, any trials, any test, any difficulties hits their life because they they have this feeling because of they have the position of rida satisfaction they always can maintain their emotion right they always can find joy and beauty and happiness in their life there is a beautiful story here one day uh, a person an individual was walking and he was passing by a ranch and he saw a man who is blind who is in a very uh, very difficult uh, position in terms of his health, in terms of his uh, economic situation, and also he is blind and he is disabled, right? And he has to work because he has no one, and he needs to find uh, food for himself. So he was working on the land, and all of a sudden, he uh, lost the sight of another eyes, right? He had one eye was working, the other was blind. So he lost the sight and the ability to see from the other eye as well. While this man was walking and he was seeing this incident, he looked up the old man and said, Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the man approached him, he said, you are blind and you just lost your uh, another eye. and You're in a very uh, severe uh, situation and you're praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is that? And the man start recalling the favors and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has given him. And the position of this man is a position that those people that they are satisfied and they are content from their Lord they have. It's not shocking someone like Bibi Zainab sallallahu alayha, he, she can see the beauty within the most severe trial uh, on the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because they have this, uh, this contentment, right? Surah Al-Fajr, Ya ayyatuhal nafsul mutma'inna. 
Oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling the uh, nafs and the spirit of those people that they reach yaqeen, right? They are certain. They reach to the level and the position of certainty, right? Irji'i ila rabbik. Come back to your Lord. Radiyatan mardiyya. You're content, right? Your spirit is content and come back. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues that your Lord is content from you as well. So, fatkhuli fi ibadi wa tkhuli jannati. Come and enter to the heaven, right? So, here Imam uh, as sadiq is referring one of the characteristic of Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam. He was someone who is pleased, right? Al-Hadi, Al-Mahdi, he's someone who's guide and he's well guided. He also is a guide for Ummah, for the nation, and also he's the guided, right? Mahdi, wa ashhadu anna al-a'immata min wuldik kalimatu taqwa. And I bear witness that the Imams from your progeny are the spokesmen of Piety, kalimatu taqwa. Maybe uh, this is one of the word and the part of the ziyara that there's no way to translate kalimatu taqwa. In another word, you're the one who is embodied taqwa. You're the one that uh, whoever wanna introduce taqwa should point and show you you're the one who is the manifestation of taqwa and piety huda you're the sign of guidance wal urwatul wuthqa and you are you are the firmest handle of islam wal urwatul wuthqa wal hujjatu ala Ahlet dunya, and you're the one, you're the proof of the people of this world. It means that you are the hujja for the people. You are there because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed you to be a proof, right? Whenever people want to seek guidance and understand the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have someone, somewhere to go. In different narrations, and also there is an ayah, that there is no such a time without a hujjah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without a proof, without a guidance. So, there is a narration from Imam al-Rida alayhi salatu wasalam and I'm going to inshallah end this uh, this lecture uh, with this narration because we're uh, at the end of this ziyara and he, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam is talking about the position of Imam and we know that whoever has more ma'rifah and knowledge the act and the action of the one who has knowledge is more valuable than other people and in fact there's a narration that a knowledgeable man his or her sleep is more valuable than the one who worships without knowledge one of the things that we need to always enhance and increase our knowledge is toward the Imams. What is the position and what does Imam mean really? We need to know more than just Imams or people that we need to listen and they are perfect, they are pure from any evilness, any sin, any mistake, any wrongdoing, any shortcoming. Sometimes and always we need to know much more than that in order to enhance our knowledge and with 
enhancing and increasing our knowledge, we actually deepening the belief and the faith that we have. And in that way, we, we come we, and we reach to a position that our actions would mean more, right? Would have more impact on us, even uh, as simple as praying, for example. Someone who has more knowledge, his or her prayers would have more spirit in it. So there is a beautiful narration. It's a long narration. Maybe we uh, we keep it uh, for the uh, for the uh, for the future as well. But very profound way Imam al Rada والسلام, is explaining the position of Imam. He starts Al Imam Kashams Talia Al Mujallilahu Binuriha Lil Alam Imam is like a bright very shiny sun that with his sun with his light the imam will enlighten this world so if you think about this illustration if you look at straight to the sun you cannot see really the sun right you just can see the light that spreading throughout the world you cannot directly look at the sun whenever you look you just see the light right you cannot discover the sun itself the only thing that you can discover is the lights that's spreading the same thing is about Imam no one can really discover the Imam or an Imam because his existence because his characteristic because his his uh, capacity right is beyond our grasp I cannot just understand and discover imam as whole right what i can do is i can discover and understand the light that the imam is spreading it means i can see his life i can see his characteristic i can find out his teaching and use his light in order to enlighten our heart in order to enlighten my heart and the same thing is true about the imam of our time we cannot see him as we cannot see the sun right but imam alayhi salatu wasalam is spreading his light and people of this earth they take advantage from the light that the sun is spreading وَهِيَ بِالْأُفُقْ بِحَيْثِ لَا تَنَالَهَا الْأَيْدِي وَالْأَبْصَارِ Imam, Imam's position is where that no one, no hands and no eyes can reach him. It means, again, it's, if you go back to the illustration that Imam used, that Imam compares uh, the Imam with the sun is the same right you cannot take it you cannot grasp it you cannot look at it but you take advantage from the light that you receive al imam al ma al adab al dhama imams beautifully imams are like those fresh water that people that they are thirsty they drink from so imams are those people that the people that they are thirsty in sight right thirsty from knowledge about uh, in in terms of spirituality right those people whenever whenever they discover imam whenever they see they understand they read about the imam they feel fulfillment right 
they feel contentment whenever they learn something from Imam alayhi salatu wasalam. What dal ala al huda wal munji min al rada. Imams are are the guidance for the people al wal munji min al rada, and they are the savior of those people that they are behind, right? Those people that they fail, those people that they they make mistake, they commit sin, right? They were misguided. So Imams are the savior for those people. Imams would take their hand and lift them up and raise them up in a way that they did, for example, about Hur. Right, someone who blocked the water, the first one who blocked the water to Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu wasalam. Someone alayhi salatu wasalam. Someone who uh, Bibi Zainab was uh, upset at him, right? So Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam raised him and lifted him up, up in a position that all shuhada and all martyrs, they wish to be in a position of Hur. They wish to be in Karbala. Everyone from Imams after Imam al Hussein to those people that they are close to Imams, they wish to be in a position of Hur. They wish to be in a position to help Imam al Hussein Al Imam al Anis al Rafiq. Imams are Anis means those people that they calm you, right? Whenever you're stressed, whenever you are exhausted and annoyed and upset, what you need is someone who just calms you, right? So Imams are those people, Al-Anis, whenever you call them, whenever you, you make relationship, friendship with them, you feel tranquility and, and calmness in your heart. Al-Rafiq, they are friends. Shafiq, they are like those loving father shaqiq, and they are like brother you see inshallah maybe uh, for sure we're going to continue this beautiful narration so imam rida alayhi salatu wasalam is giving us a picture that it's broad enough to make the Imam as someone who is going to guide us, as someone who is going to command us, as someone who is going to calm us down, as someone who is going to make a good relationship, as someone who is like brother, who that I can share my concerns, those uh, those issues that I cannot share with anyone I can share with the Imam right those things that I don't tell to anyone I can just directly call my Imam and talk to my Imam we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in knowledge we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to be among those people that they are devoted to the Imam of their time, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us, forgive our sins, forgive our father, our mother's sins, those people that they have right upon us. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and help us that we can be pure from impurity and sins. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of امام الحج عجل الله تعالى فرج الشريف والسلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا خيرة الله وابن خيرتي السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وابن سيد الوصيين 
السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك يا ثار الله وابن ثاره والوتر الموتور السلام عليك وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار يا أبا عبد الله لقد عظمت الرزية وجلت وعظمت المصيبة بك علينا وعلى جميع أهل الإسلام وجلت وعظمت مصيبتك في السماوات على جميع أهل السماوات فلعن الله أمة أسست أساس الظلم والجأو عليكم أهل البيت ولعن الله أمة دفعتكم عن مقامكم وأزالتكم عن مراتبكم التي رتبكم الله فيها ولعن الله أمة قتلتكم ولعن الله الممهدين لهم بالتمكين من قتالكم برئت إلى الله وإليكم منهم ومن أشياعهم وأتباعهم وأوليائهم يا أبا عبد الله إني سلم لمن سالمكم وحرب المآن حاربكم إلى يوم القيامة ولعن الله على زياد وآل مروان ولعن الله بني أمية قاطبا ولعن الله بنا مرجانا ولعن الله عمر بن سعد ولعن الله شمرا ولعن الله أمة أسرجات وألجمات وتنقبات لقتالك بأبي أنت وأمي لقد عظم مصابي بك فأسأل الله الذي أكرم مقامك وأكرمني بك أن يرزقني طلب ثارك مع إمام منصور من أهل بيت محمد صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم اجعلني عندك وجيها بالحسين عليه السلام في الدنيا والآخرة يا أبا عبد الله إني أتقرب إلى الله وإلى رسوله وإلى أمير المؤمنين وإلى فاطمة وإلى الحسن وإليك بموالاتك وبالبراءة ممن قاتلك ونصب لك الحب وبالبراءة ممن أسس أساس الظلم والجبر عليكم وأبرأ إلى الله وإلى رسوله 
ممن أسس أساس ذلك وبنى عليه بنيانا وجرى في ظلمه وجوره عليكم وعلى أشياعكم برئت إلى الله وإليكم منهم وأتقرب إلى الله ثم إليكم بموالاتكم وموالات وليكم وبالبراءة من أعدائكم والناصبين لكم الحرب وبالبراءة من أشياعهم وأتباعهم إني سلم لمن سالمكم وحرب لمن حاربكم وولي لمن والاكم وعدو لمن عاداكم فاسال الله الذي اكرمني بمعرفتكم ومعرفه اوليائكم ورزقني البراءة من أعدائكم أن يجعلني معكم في الدنيا والآخرة وأن يثبت لي عندكم قدم صدق في الدنيا والآخرة وأسأل أن يبلغني المقام المحمود لكم عند الله ويرزقني طلب ثاري مع إمام هدى ظاهر ناطق بالحق منكم وأسأل الله بحقكم وبالشأن الذي لكم عنده أن يعطيني بمصابي بكم أفضل ما يعطي مصابا بمصيبتي مصيبة ما أعظمها وأعظم رزيتها في الإسلام وفي جميع السماوات والأرض اللهم اجعلني في مقامي هذا ممن تنالوا منك صلوات ورحمة ومغفرة اللهم اجعل محياي محيا محمد وال محمد ومماتي ممات محمد وال محمد اللهم ان هذا يوم تبركت به بنو ميا وابن آكلة الأكوان اللعين ابن اللعين على لسانك ولسان نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله في كل موطن وموقف وقف في نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم لعن أبا سفيان ومعاوية ويزيد ابن معاوية عليهم منك اللعنة أبد الآبدين وهذا يوم فرحت به آل زياد وآل مروان بقتلهم الحسين صلوات الله علي اللهم فضاعف عليهم اللعنة منك والعذاب الأليم اللهم إني أتقرب إليك في هذا اليوم وفي موقفي هذا وأيام حياتي بالبراءة منهم واللعنة عليهم وبالموالاة لنبيك وآل نبيك عليه وعليهم السلام اللهم لعن أول ظالم ظلم حق محمد وآل محمد وآخر طابع له على ذلك اللهم لعن العصابة التي جاهدت الحسين 
و شایعت و بایعت و تابعت علا قتله اللهم لعنهم جميعا السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعل الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين اللهم خصان أنت أول ظالم باللعن مني وابدأ به أولا ثم العن الثاني والثالث والرابع اللهم لعن يزيد خامسا والعن عبيد الله بن زياد وابن مرجانا وعمر بن سعد وشمرا وآل أبي سفيان وآل زياد وآل مروان إلى يوم القيامة سجد مستحب اللهم لك الحمد حمد الشاكرين لك على مصابهم الحمد لله على عظيم رزيتين اللهم ارزقني شفاعة الحسين يوم الورود وثبت لي قدم صدق عندك مع الحسين وأصحاب الحسين الذين بذلوا منجهم دون الحسين عليه السلام اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد